Hey guys, Jill here from Ask a Vet Tech. Today we're going to talk about everything baby chicks related, from how to set up the brooder to selecting the chicks, and what supplies are out there, and what I would recommend and what I would not. And you're also going to get some really cute baby chick footage. I have raised chickens for over 12 years, and I have learned a lot by trial and error. So hopefully, you learned something from me that you don't have to find out by error. So today we got some baby chicks. It was kind of an impromptu thing. I've been thinking about it for a little while. I went to the farm store and there was one lonely baby turkey. And he was one dollar. Look at him. He's so cute. Yeah, you're cute. I'm going to need help. I'm going to need help making a name for this little guy. He's got the cutest feet. So let's talk about the brooder. So when making a brooder spot for your new chicks, you want to make sure that the area is draft free. This is really important. You also want to make sure that they'll be contained and have room enough to move around. I use an old horse trough. This is a 40 galloner, but I have seen many great brooders made from an old dog crate, a playpen, metal roofing, and even a cardboard box. Some people prefer to build a structure for their baby chicks. The goal is you want to keep them safe and contained and keep any cats or any other animals from getting into the brooder. It's important to note that as they grow, they are rapidly growing new feathers and they create a lot of dust and dander that comes off their body. If your chicks will be inside of your home, please be aware that dust coming from your baby chicks is completely normal, but it could cause an allergy flare up if you have someone sensitive in your home because the dander is shook off by the babies every day while they're preening or cleaning themselves. Now on to bedding. The bedding is up to you. I use pine shavings because they absorb the moisture and the smell. Most chicks will peck at them but not eat them. There are tons of options out there for bedding. From pellets to sand sawdust to newspaper. This is a personal preference for whatever you like. Cedar shavings is definitely not a recommendation of mine because it makes it very hard for them to breathe. Now, you're going to need some sort of heat source. A heat lamp, a heat pad, a heat plate. All of these come with a fire risk, so be careful when using them and make sure that you do everything you can to keep them from catching on fire. Temperature is really important for growth. Monitoring the temperature of your brooder is a good idea. If you see that the chicks are huddled under the heat lamp or the heat plate, put a thermometer in there. Depending on the chick's age, the temperature should fall within this chart range. If it isn't warm enough, your chicks might not thrive or they could die, so adding additional heat source might be what you need to do. When you're selecting a waterer for your baby chicks, it's best to get the kind that they can just slurp up the water and drink it. The nipple kind of waterers are meant for teenage chicks and up. Young birds have a sensitive beak after they come out of their shell, so using something that they have to peck at could cause beak damage. Using this small waterer helps reduce the risk of drowning. Some people say the nipple type waterer is the best, but it's very easy for them to get clogged. Some drip constantly, or they just fail to allow the babies to get water as needed. It takes a learning curve to figure it out. Using a small waterer such as this to start out is best to monitor the amount of water they are consuming. As they grow, changing the watering type is a personal preference. I still use a waterer that they drink out of. I like to see them drinking naturally. Feeders. Every chick is going to need to eat. As chicks age, they will consume more feed as nutritional needs increase. Starting with a small feeder or a dish is best to ensure that they are eating and you can see the amount gone after each day to monitor them closely. As they grow, you might want to upgrade their feeder to a station or a hanging feeder or feed them on the ground if they're free-ranged. So when getting baby chicks, it's a good idea to get medicated feed. Because medicated feed helps fight off coccidiosis, which many baby chicks come in contact with, and it is the main cause of poopy butt. They're tossed all over the place. They're shipped through the mail. Like, they have had a very stressful beginning of life. So, as soon as you come in contact with it, especially if your body has a low immune system, which when stress is involved, they do, it's easy for them to pick it up. See how sad he is all alone? Here, buddy, have some chicken friends. You 
You can't just get one bird. It's not healthy for them. They're a flock animal. Introducing a few. They might be standoffish at first. Mind you, all of these birds were one dollar because they're considered senior birds. These guys right here, I mean, they're still pretty tiny. This, I mean, that's my hand. My hand's not huge. They're still really small, but in the eyes of people who have no idea what they're doing for chickens, think, oh my goodness, these birds, these birds are so big, we don't want them, we want the little tiny ones. Starting to mature a little bit, which is great, but I choose the birds that are considered senior birds because they are cheaper, they're not $6 a bird, they're a buck, and they've already made it through the roughest part of their life. And as you can see, they're already getting pretty good feather, feather covering right there. My turkey, he's got some feathers too. Everybody's got a little bit of feather coverage, which means soon I'll be able to put them outside where I want them to be. Uh, this is just a temporary little brooder house until they all get their feathers. All right, time to get them some food and water. So the chickens are already in their, their little brood box and we're just gonna take them some water and uh, fill their feeder and then get them a little light set up. I know lights are contradictory, but I already have raised a ton of chickens and the light always works well for me. So I may consider a brooder plate some at some point, but right now I'm just gonna use the light I have. All right, let's get this done. Adding some chick size grit is so important. This helps them to grind up their feed so that it can be used as energy. They will eat the grit and it will go into the crop and move into the gizzard. I want to note if your chickens do not get grit, they could develop a serious health issue. You can offer it free choice or you can mix it in with the feed. Chicks don't need oyster shells just yet. That helps with calcium and they're not laying eggs yet. Here you go, babies. Your own little feed station. There is a reason that I put it on a block every single time is because these guys get crazy and will fling their feed everywhere. They're a little bit chilly, so let's get their lamp and get that set up. Look at this cat. This is supposed to be a black cat. It rolled in the dirt and is so dusty now. It looks like a gray cat. Silly girl. So if you haven't already, please hit that like button, the subscribe button, and share it off with a friend. Any bit of support that you can give me is amazing. I really appreciate you. This is just one way that you can support the channel. Another way is to buy me a coffee. I have a buy me a coffee link below. If you choose to do so, that just helps me support my channel and helps me to purchase things for upcoming videos. I'm gonna clean it off before I hang it up. So the main concern with these guys is whatever you tie to it can get hot, right? So, I mean, you need to make sure that whatever you're hooking to it can get warm. Make sure that this little metal thing actually comes down to the cord that is attached to it. So nothing can touch it there. And make sure that you're plugging it in like you're supposed to. I just took out the bulb that was inside of it. See how dirty and dusty that is? That's important to clean off too, okay? Because it's gonna literally sit right below the heat. So let's make sure we get that cleaned off too, or just replace it. All right, so a couple other safety things. If you put your bulb in and it flops really bad all over the place, it's not safe, okay? A little wiggle like that is okay, but you wanna make sure that it's not flopping around in there. If it's flopping, it's not safe, so don't use it. So on the ceiling of our garage, I have an eye hook that Kent installed for me, and I have an old dog chain that I run through. And the reason I do that is because then I can adjust it as far down as I need it to be to get to the baby chicks. I also have a old clothes hanger that I just wrapped throughout there and then literally just feed it through right where I need it. I want to make sure 
that it's secured to the ceiling so it can't fall out. Some kind of metal to hold the light. And then I can move my table because it's on rollers. There's a bunch of junk in my garage, but I also want to note that this right here is not safe. Having that hang down like that, like that. You want it up and off and then run your cord. So I just tied it up top with another piece. I just don't want it touching the plastic here because this is a fire hazard if you have stuff touching it. I know kids, we're going to get your light just one second. It's that simple, folks, to get your backyard chicken started. Here's an update. So, you know, we had one turkey, right? Well, turkeys don't do great all by themselves. So we went to the other farm store and found another one. So I'll let you peek. They're so cute. All right, kids. And these guys are teeny tiny. So they're, they're, like, as you can see, they barely have any feathers. So they're mostly fluff. They're so cute though. So everybody's just not sure about everybody else. It's gonna be okay. Get in there. Aw, you wanna hold my hand? That was sweet. There's some cars going by on the road and they're all listening. Good night, little babies. I did move my heat lamp a little bit closer because it is really cold tonight and they're in the garage. So this is the only heat they have and uh, they seem to be doing just fine. Everybody's got a little bit of feather fluff and they're doing all right. Everyone's starting to settle in. Eating some food. Turkey lurkey. Oh! <laughs> Down. Okay. I said, we'll just put the brown one. <laughs> New turkeys! Beep. Beep. Hand around the neck. Like when you're holding them, like, put your hands like this, like it's flat, instead of like turning them to you. See, it feels like it's on level. There you go, he's sleeping. That one just caught a bug. Oh, yeah? A fly or something. When creating a brooder, keep in mind that they do not need to be in a brooder for a long time, maybe a month or two. Make sure that it is secure from animals. You don't have to spend a lot of money on this setup. Your final coop setup should be what you spend a lot of time and effort on in making sure it's secure and predator proof. Baby chicks are so much fun to have and to raise up. Watching them grow and change from little fluff balls to an adult is so fun and such a great experience. Don't forget to play with your chicks. That's how you make friendly hens. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you don't miss a thing that I put out. Remember, I'm here for you. You're here for your pet. Have a great day.